Hi, I'm Nick, and welcome back to another episode of Art Explained. Today we're going to be talking about the seven elements that make up artwork, and then use those elements to determine whether these pieces of art are actually pieces of art or not. The seven elements are line, shape, form, value, color, texture, and space. Now, on to the first line. A line is two segments joined together like this. Boop! And then boop! Followed by a swoosh! Observant math people will go, That's not a line. That's a line segment. Well, that's true for geometry. For all intents and purposes, it's a line now. Anyways, the deceptive thing is that different lines mean different things. Diagonal lines are action lines, while vertical lines tend to show more strength and rigidity, and horizontal lines look more at rest. You can make all sorts of other lines with different meaning. Angry lines are quick and thicker because of the medium crushing against the page. You can make wistful lines that meander across the page and have your eye move with them until the end. Zigzag lines that keep your eye darting from start to finish. The types of lines are endless. Shapes are spaces enclosed by lines. Some shapes are geometric, so they only have straight edges. Some shapes are organic and amorphous and contain bends and curves. The feeling that both of these types of lines give often is the same kind of line that is used to make them. For example, a geometric square is robust, and it can be even made more robust by thickening the line that made it up. After all, an equilateral triangle is the strongest shape in nature. An organic form might not read as robust. It may read as a flat ooze that does not support itself. Take out your fancy schmancy 3D glasses and look at the shapes. A circle becomes a sphere. A square becomes a cube. Forms are just shapes in 3D. 3D. You can take your 3D glasses off now. Value. If you've ever seen a black and white picture, you've seen values. Values are black, white, gray of the picture. Don't confuse them with color because they are achromatic or without chroma are color. Value does a great job of pushing and pulling back shapes in the picture field. Shapes that are lighter... Lighter circled in black or white tend to want to stand forward in the composition. Shapes that are darker circled in white or black tend to move back in the composition. It's a visual illusion of sorts that gives depth to a two-dimensional surface. Colors are all around you. Chromas or colors are mixed together with value to give you sorts of colors. By mixing in light values, we get tints. By mixing in dark values, we get shades. According to the prevalent color theory, there are three primary colors and three secondary colors. Primary colors are called that because nothing mixes together to make them. There's so much more to color theory to explore, but let's save that for a different date. Texture. Texture is my favorite element of art. We feel texture all the time. The roughness of sandpaper, the softness of kitty fur, the smoothness of a pebble that has been found on the beach. These are all tex tactile textures. If you can physically feel a texture on a work of art, it is tactile. On the flip side, if you see something that looks like it has a feeling, but it's just smooth paint, that's what's called simulated texture. Space is simultaneously the easiest and the hardest element to get. On the one hand, it's just distance between two objects. Simple enough. On the other hand, there is this idea called positive and negative space. Positive space is what reaches your eye first, while negative space is more or less the background. The positive space is usually lighter, as per talked about in value, while the negative space is darker. However, sometimes these two can switch roles. Do you see a vase or two faces? Different people see different things first, creating the positive space, and the rest becomes the negative space. Now, from what we've learned today, can we piece together several of these pieces of art? I'll give you a few seconds to decide on each.
all of these works are exemplify the elements of art. If an if a piece does not utilize the elements of art, it is a good guess that it is not a work of art. Or is it? Next time on Art Explained, we'll be going back to where it all started thousands of years ago. We'll be exploring the world of cave art. <laughs>